in the building. Today is October the 23rd, 2011. What is in our hearts, part three. Coming from the old text, Deuteronomy, chapter six, verse five, King James Version. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Our new text can be found in Matthew chapter 12, verse 35, King James Version. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Please join us in worship, Pastor Charles McDaniels. That is a very, very potent thing when you understand and are willing to do that out of your heart. This is going to get a little bit down where the rubber meets the road today. In other words, don't look. Uh, you can if you want to say to somebody, it's going to get personal today. It's personal. Now, I don't mean like the world says it's personal. It is that we have to make it personal that we get right in to where God would have us to be. Amen. Because uh, we can say or do some things that are very hurtful yes, sir. because we've been hurt. Yes, sir. But we have to let those things go and allow God to minister unto us. This is very poignant. This whole service, I hope you had your ears on because God was speaking loudly. If you had ears to hear and eyes to see. Again, what is in our hearts is very important because it makes it individually. You can't think for me, and I can't think for you. I, I can't change your thinking the way God can. Amen. So you ought to listen to him, his word, what he's saying, because we all have a lot of temptation out there. Don't sit up there. I, I said, oh. And again, just like now, when God moved me, I want us to kind of hold up all correctional institutions now in your, in your prayer time. Because when it gets these times of the year, that's when the enemy gets busy. So you see what you're missing? That old Thanksgiving dinner, your mama, you, see, you know, all those things go through their mind. Get around Christmas time, you and him. But we know that there's no distance in prayer. No, sir. No, sir. So we can pray that your joy would come and it will override all the evil that Satan is trying to do. I must read our base scriptures. And thou shalt, that mean you, shall love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul yes, and with all thy might. And that is a progression way of thinking. First, you must acknowledge him as father. That's why he's being. Then you must acknowledge him as creator. Then you must acknowledge him as the giver of my intellect, of my soul. He made me and you exactly the way he wanted you. Yes, we make some bad decisions and we do things, but, but God loves us right where we are. The intellect of your soul, meaning that that's why you are the way you are. God said, I put that in you. I know what my thoughts are towards you, love and peace, give you an expected end. Now, in other words, your thought patterns, in other words, with all thine heart, in other words, you must live your life 
not based upon what the world is saying, Amen. but what's based upon what thus saith the Lord. Amen. You don't try to fix a Volkswagen with a Cadillac book. They don't have they don't they don't look the same. Yet we'll take some knowledge that somebody said they got out here that uh could mean anything. We'll look at them shows, them old self-help shows, and get in all kind of difficulties because you're not listening to nothing but nonsense. It's in the Word. Again, Matthew 12 and 35, A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. But God said, now I want you, this is going to mean a little more to you today. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall what? Give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Now how do we apply that now? It's very simple. We have to watch what we say, not only to our brothers and our sisters in the church, but you need to watch what you say on the job sometimes. Shouldn't nobody see you coming in the doors on Sunday and they have to run in you on Monday or Tuesday and you laying somebody out with every expletive that can come out of your mouth. The Bible said blessings and cursings don't come out of the same mouth. Now you can do it. But I, 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 you know, you know, it's 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 very simple. For by the words thou shalt be justified, and by the words thou shalt be condemned. In other words, what you say, what you do, what you believe in, that's what's going to get you either in or out. That's your choice. Twenty-three. I have to get these base scriptures so. Because we're leading to where God wants us to be. For as, Proverbs 23 and 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you think you this, that, and other, and so forth, that's what you are. If you think you're poor me, baby, and everything happens to me and all that, no. That's not how God wants you to look at it. I mean, stuff will happen in your life. But all the stuff that's going on around from exotic animals, you hear the preachers, now what makes you think that you were immune? These things could have been right here on your doorstep. But God says the eyes of the Lord run through and forth throughout the whole world and it's strong on behalf of them whose heart is right with him. So you got to understand. And, and, and see when we begin to understand that God wants to tabernacle with you. That's the Old Testament. He wants to be on the inside of you. He stands at the door and he knocks. He said let me in. We'll sit out and sup. Because I know you go through things down here. Stuff happens. But I'm still the answer. When you're on your job. And the whole purpose. Of God sending you this love letter. So you would understand that Jesus came for one reason alone. To destroy the works of the devil. And to get you necessary, get you back to, to the father. Now you see, that sounds like, no, they're all the same thing. See, that's what happened. Folks try to segment it. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But it's one, it's one act. I destroy the works of the devil so you can get back to dad. Do you understand and believe that? Because if you don't destroy the works of the devil, you don't get to the father. Because he destroyed the works of the devil, you can't get back to daddy. Because 
you must understand, I cannot let just anything get in my heart. We study God the heart with all diligence. Because out of it are the issues of life. Now what should I do? Now let's go to Ephesians, the third chapter, 17 verse. Everything, when you come to church, you go to Bible study, you study the word, why is that necessary? Let's get a book on it. That Christ may dwell in your hearts. Is that plain enough? What does it say? That Christ may dwell in your hearts. How does he supposed to dwell? By faith. Yes, sir. That you being rooted and grounded in love. Why is that important? God knows you. a lot of times our own mouth creates enemies. Hmm? You notice when he was brought before Brad, he didn't open his mouth. Sometimes you don't need to say nothing. When somebody acting crazy, don't even say nothing to him. And then don't be so quick to rip your brother in. Don't get quiet on me, y'all. Yes, hmm? yes, Are you listening to what God is saying today? Why is that important that we have quiet Christ to dwell in us that we will be rooted and grounded in love? Minister Moore, would you read Proverbs 18, verse 19? Because right now, we, we you know, it's, it's the human nature when we operate in the flesh to give, get, if somebody says something smart to you, you're going to say something smart back to them. Are you going to say something to a brother or a sister in there that because you don't know all that they've been through, you can say one word and stir up some very bad hurts in their hearts. And God said when that happens, when you attack your brother and your sister, instead of you being rooted and grounded in love, God said, I want to remind you something. What does that have to say? Reading from the King James. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And there... Contentions are like the bars of a castle. In other words, they just put up walls. Yes, sir. How many of y'all know in churches right now, there's folks sitting next to them mad. They can't, they just sitting up there. <clears throat> can stand. Uh, and she went up there and preached, you know, whatever. Right. Stuff is being said in church on stuff because... So what if you were inconvenient? You went out in the street, they do everything, they inconvenience you, and you don't say nothing. But understand, little barbs and digs, they can be to the point that you can offend a brother. Yes, sir. And then that by that offense, and if y'all don't honor that, it becomes contention. Yes. And when it's contention, it causes separations in the body of Christ. Now don't y'all get quiet on me yes, now, huh? Because if we don't watch what's in our heart, we'll say anything. Yes, we will, Pastor. Yes, we will. In a heartbeat. You'll say anything. Yes. And, and then catch yourself later and say, why did I say that? Yes. But what happens, see, when you want the word, when it's a part. Just like she was talking about, she did it because that's what she wanted to do. You must understand. This. Now let's go to Proverbs 16 and 22. Go there with me. 16 and 22. Because it has to be an act of your will. You want to make sure your thinking is in order. Everybody does say amen. amen. Understanding. Understanding. He said, with all your getting, get understanding. Because a lot of times, if you don't have the right understanding, that's why your mouth flies off. That's right. That's right. Understanding. I said, understanding the word. Breaking it down. Studying. Showing thyself. 
understanding is a wellspring of life. You see what I'm saying? When you really understand this, it's a wellspring. It's a gushing of life. Life does not become laborious to you. It's a joy. In spite of what's going on. You see the beauty in everything that God created, which means even that person sitting next to you, you see the beauty that God put in them. Oh, don't get quiet on me now. That's true. It's a wellspring of life unto him, all inclusive, that have it, but the instructions of fools is folly. Do you understand what God just said that I have nothing against Oprah, but she'll get on and be spouting out some kind of, but see, I, I, I just want y'all to have this and and, I, and you know, this book just changed my life and, and blotted. It. It's foolishness. If it didn't come from God's word, it's dumb stuff. But she make a lot of money, yeah, but she going to pay for every word that came out of her mouth, too. Understand that. The, the world will get you in bad shape if you let it. They always got an answer for something and don't know what they're talking about. Can I get an amen in the house? I mean, it's a lot of times you listen to some junk, they don't even have a clue what they're talking about. And yet we're a believer. Let's go to James. We're going to cover something rather hurriedly in the book of James, the third chapter. We're going to commence at the 13th, and we're going to do some study rather rapidly down through four. And eight. But I want you to grab hold to the etymology of this. See, you got to first want it. I can't make you get this word. I didn't ask you to have the appetite of myself or the preachers, but it ought to be something you heard, something ought to grab your attention a little bit. Amen. James 3 and 13, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Question. Do you know? I hear my folks, everybody talking about, I have nothing against Dr. Oz, but they act like he's, he got carte blanche. That man can say something on television, everybody doing it. Don't look at me like y'all don't hear what I'm, I mean, I'm sorry. I ain't got nothing against the man. But God been talking to you from eons, from the first earth age even to now. And you don't want to listen to him? That's right. Hmm? Yet, God has given you instructions on, he's not doing anything but regurgitating what all of the laws of eating that God put in Leviticus 11. That's right. Have you read it? That's right. That's right. What to eat, what not to eat. And we think he's some genius. Do you realize medical science is just getting caught up with God? And they still haven't caught up with him. And during the Civil War, they didn't know nothing about quarantining or cleaning nothing. God said that back in Leviticus and all of it and broke down how your pots and pans, everything should be clean. But some little folks can get a TV program on and, and get the spout nonsense. And we'll run and do it. Let him show out of a good conversation, his works with meekness of wisdom. Ooh, I want y'all to unline that. I want each one of you to study and read, and God will speak to your heart on that. You would be surprised because too many times we shrink because somebody said something that you can't do. 
and you believe them. But God said, and you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. But if somebody said, you can't do that, you quit. Whether we have, let's keep reading, okay? But if you have bitter envy and strife, where? In your heart, glory not. Get that thinking together. Don't get mad because one of your sisters, the brother, getting blessed. Get blessed yourself. Amen. Learn what the word says so he can bless you just like he blessed. He's not a respecter person. Not at all, but the minute you let envy and all the bitterness get in your heart, you just wiped out everything that God can do for you. Amen. I didn't write this as often. Glory not. And lie not against the truth. See, I'm going to tell y'all something. I ain't picking on nobody, but see, there's a whole lot of them folks get disillusioned when some old preachers get on television and say this, that, and other, and so forth, and the folks, instead of reading it for themselves, they think God said it, and they get disillusioned with God, but God ain't never said that. Some man said that. See, time so sow seed and you'll get it back. That ain't even what that's talking about. But have you read it? And he said be rooted and grounded in love means just what it said. Your inner person have me residing in there. Your temple, your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit which will teach you all things. See, we got all this nonsense out here. But this is what God said. This wisdom descendeth not <clears throat> from above, but it's earthly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is earthly. It is earthly, Pastor. Yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have y'all heard some of these commercials that these folks talking about take my medicine, but you might have a heart attack, you might get cancer, you might your hair might fall out and all that. And yet, you go and take it. I'm just asking, I know you, if it, I, I'm not necessarily, I watch sports and I know a lot of times them commercials don't have me and the wife look at dog. I'd rather keep what I got to to get all that. Woo! Lord, have mercy. It's earthly, sensual. Devilish. Yes. What's in your heart? What's in your heart? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's in your heart? Uh, my young people, what's that? A 106 something? I don't know the name on BET. They get on that. You might see them doing anything. Of it. Is that what you like to watch? Yes. I'm saying you can't, but you need to watch it through the eyes of God because it's what it says. Like I told you last week, all the stuff they said, we got to dirty it up. Mm -hmm. And all that kind of stuff, dance. I don't, they don't want yeah. clean cut harmony or good choreography. They want bumping and grinding. That's what they're saying. It's earthly and sensuous. Look at some of your young people, how they dress. They're not concerned about whether it's modest or anything. Does it fit tight? Do I have a certain, whatever they say, do I have a, a Beyonce booty? Excuse me, I know I'm in the... And they believe that. This is what I'm talking about. It's earthly and sensual, yet it impregnates our mind. We walk around, we look at it, we let folks segment us. If that's all, if you got breasts or you got six packs and that's all they see, what you want to deal with somebody like that for? It's more to you than that. For, for where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. 
Do you understand that? Do you see what God is saying? You want to go with in crowd. But what did God just tell you there? Confusion. And every evil word. But yet we'll bust down the door going to them concerts. And come out of there with a contact high. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. See. I, I wasn't always a preacher. I used to go, but I never smoked, never done anything because I was an athlete. But I like y'all. I made some of them things, but I, I can verify that. Oh, yeah. they, be, they be mad. Everybody be, especially the bands. I used to be a road manager. Boy, they be unplugging each other's amps and trying to keep each other from getting on top. But yet they claim they're all trying to.